Okay, today I'm going to talk about something slightly different, which is a prediction of where we will be as regards IVF ten years from now in the year 2027. So many things could have happened by then. We could probably have, will have public space travel. England may have won the Football World Cup and we might even have peace in the Middle East, who knows. But what about IVF? Well, what are the aims in the next 10 years? First of all, we want less stress for the patients. We want softer protocols, less monitoring, less injectable medicines, less uh, complications, and we want better results. How are we going to achieve this? Well, I believe that, first of all, AMH will become absolutely standard. Uh, a measurement, the anti-mullerian hormone, will help us plan our uh, protocols as it, uh, as it does today uh, and will severely reduce the complication rate. So AMH measurement, I believe, in 10 years' time will be absolutely uh, standard. Uh, measurement. I believe that the GnRH antagonist will also be standard and will completely replace the GnRH agonist. Why? Because it's much more convenient for the patients, it's much easier, it's a shorter cycle and importantly there's much less chance of ovarian hyperstimulation. We can, I believe, achieve an OHSS-free clinic and this should be achievable in the next uh, 10 years with, as I've said, the predictive help of uh, AMH and also by using only an antagonist. We can reduce the multiple pregnancy rate I think we will go over more and more to single embryo transfer and by using time-lapse imaging, which I also believe uh, will be standard, this will help us in our aim of using more and more single embryo transfer simply by picking the correct embryo to transfer. We can make it easier for the patient certainly if we have no injections at all and it's quite possible within the next 10 years that we will have an oral preparation of LH, of FSH and antagonist. All this work is underway these days and it's not too difficult to predict that these will come in in the next 10 years making life for the patient very much easier. Kispeptin is the new kid on the block and this may well find a place in treatment even if it doesn't it's certainly extremely interesting physiologically because kispeptin seems to control not only the negative feedback of the uh, estrogen and progesterone but also uh, controls feedback from the higher centers it then sends a message to the hypothalamus uh, to change the pulsatility and therefore the concentration of the pituitary hormones that are being released. So keep an eye open for kispeptin and the developments there. I also believe we're going to improve the sperm selection uh, for ICSI uh, with uh, methods uh, such as uh, the use of uh, hyaluronic acid uh, and this can attract the best sperm in much the way that uh, a woman's perfume can attract the best men. We have no solution for the older age at the moment. So I wonder, will mitochondrial replacement actually become a routine or at least can be offered as a treatment? This is not too far from the imagination. The beauty of the mitochondrial replacement is it can retain the parent's genetic makeup and yet make uh, the cell, the egg, 
very much younger uh, in inverted commas because the mitochondria are really a battery of the cell itself and if this is replaced by a younger mitochondria then that may this is going to make all the difference and finally 10 years on I very much hope that IVF uh, is going to be cheaper and is really going to be available for everyone who needs it uh, rather than uh, maybe just a privileged few. Thank you.